welcome to the topic on thermal spray deposition. This particular topic will be covered in four talks, lecture number 41 to 44. So, thermal spray deposition in this particular talk, I will discuss about the introduction of this particular process, then classifications, applications and finally, the future scope of research. Now, if you talk about thermal spray deposition, it is nothing but a kind of category of processes in which a material is heated to a state of molten state and then spread over the surface of another substrate to create the coating. So, this particular technique is in between weld overlaying and hot dipping. In hot dipping, you melt the material and subsequently you deposit it by dipping the substrate into the molten metal. On the other hand, in weld overlaying, you basically apply high power heat source to melt the material and subsequently apply on the sub surface of the substrate. And thermal spraying is a kind of versatile technique which can take care of uh, deposition of the low melting material as in hot dipping as well as high melting point material as is weld overlaying. So, where again the material is melted and subsequently it is coated onto the surface of substrate by the process of spraying. This particular technique is very easy and is versatile in nature. So, as you are depositing it by spraying, there is very less distortion of the substrate, there, there is a very good bonding at the interface, but bonding is not as strong as in weld overlaying or maybe in hot dipping. Because the mechanism of bonding is basically mechanical interlocking, there is very little diffusion at the interface. So, usually this particular technique is a versatile technique as I mentioned, because this technique can be applied for a wide range of materials, maybe starting from polymeric materials to high melting ceramic material and deposition speed is very fast. There is negligible heat affected zone, the process is very much environment friendly, there is superior coating properties, lower substrate distortion and much more economical as compared to that of uh, high, uh, high end processing like laser or electron beam processing and it is capable of deposition on heat sensitive materials. So, this process is a very much unique process and, but you have to choose the process parameters as well as process technique in terms of heat source carefully. So, that you get the desired coating onto the surface of the substrate. Now, accordingly different varieties of thermal spray deposition techniques are available. If you just quickly go through the techniques or maybe classification of thermal spray deposition techniques, you can broadly classify into four categories like flame spray deposition, electric arc spray deposition, plasma spray deposition and kinetic deposition, kinetic spraying process. So, as the name implies in flame spray deposition you use oxyacetylene flame as the source of it, electric arc you are using you use electric arc as source of it plasma arc you use plasma arc as source of it. On the other hand in kinetic strain you do not use any high heat source for melting purpose. This is basically it is also called cold spraying process because material is in the form of unmolted state usually or maybe semi molten state. You avoid the overheating of the powder so that there is degradation of the powder. So, this particular kinetic strain technique is mostly applied for deposition of polymeric materials or nanostructured materials where there is scope of degradation of the microstructure because of heat. Now, if you talk about different class sub classifications under flame strain, you will find that the sub classifications are based on the way you are using the precursor material. It may be in the form of powder, it may be in the form of wear or it may be in the form of rod. And if it is in the form of powder, then there may be conventional flame spraying or detonation gun spraying, same spraying or high velocity oxy fuel spraying. Then again under high velocity category there are again sub sub classification like oxy fuel, oxy kerosene or air kerosene depending on the kind of fuel you use for uh, burn for sub heat generation by burning. So, you will find that uh, the powder spraying may be in the form of conventional or detonation gun how you are producing the how you are igniting the uh, this oxyacetylene fuel and high velocity means velocity is very high above the sonic velocity. So, again your uh, fuel might be different depending on the kind of heat you need for the 
generation of the heat as well as for the development of the coating. On the other hand, it may be in the form of wear or in the form of rod. If it is in the form of wear or it is in the form of rod, then it has to be only under conventional category because under detonation gun or high velocity category, you do not use, you cannot use wear as the precursor material for deposition. On the other hand, rod when you use as precursor, there also it has to be conventional flame strain. Then if you talk about electric arc spraying, this may be air electric arc spraying or inert electrical arc spraying or maybe chamber spraying where you use special chamber for development of the coating. And under plasma, it may be the plasma air, air, air plasma spraying or maybe chamber plasma spraying. So, in air plasma spraying, you do plasma spraying operation, you do spraying in normal environment where there is a environment only air in the environment. On the other hand, in chamber plasma spraying, you can use inert chamber, low pressure chamber, shrouding chamber, hyperbaric chamber or underwater chamber depending on the kind of material you are going to deposit onto which substrate. And kinetic spraying is basically cold process where you do not heat the powder and you basically use very high velocity for spraying operation and as a result of which kinetic spraying is a very safe process, but can only be applied for low melting point materials coating. So, these are in general classifications of thermal spray position techniques. Now, if you quickly go through the technique in details, you will find that uh, how the technique is uh, how the spraying is done. This is typically the spray torch where you basically can use any heat source for uh, heat generation and in the torch you basically uh, you inject powder and powder particle size usually is 45 to 60 micron and if it is too low a dimension like if it is a powder particle size is uh, uh, sub micron then there will be problem of agglomeration of particles, there is problem of uh, flying of the particles. So, usually most of the heat based process use the micro sized particle of the order of 45 to 60 micron particle dimension. And if you are interested to use nano sized particle for spraying purpose, you have to agglomerate it and subsequently spray dry and make it uh, make the particle size of that level. Certainly, nano size particle does not mean that powder particle size is nano dimension, it is a green size or crystallite size is nano in dimension. So, your particle nano size it may be nano size, grain size or particle, uh, particle that is uh, grain size or crystallite size may be nano sized or micro sized, but actual particle size should be in the level of 45 to 60 micron and should be flowable. So, that particle is actually fed or injected uh, near to the tip of the flame and then it is melted and with the help of high velocity uh, that uh, high velocity oxygen or high velocity inert gas uh, or high velocity nitrogen, it is propelled and subsequently spread over the surface of the substrate. Now, if you quickly see the parameters in this particular process, parameters are that uh, nozzle to substrate distance, the velocity of the spraying and the kind of heat source you are using for spraying as well as the powder particle size. So, these are the parameters which play a very important role in determining the microstructure as well as the uh, that composition distribution of the coated layer and subsequently its properties. Now, if you quickly go through the coating thickness and how the coating thickness uh, and uh, properties of the coating varies with uh, this distance along radial direction, you will find that in the middle of that particular nozzle the distance is maximum, coating rate is maximum, it is highly dense, but as you go along the radial direction you will find that the coating density decreases and also thickness decreases. So, you should have a kind of overlapping of two uh, tracks, so that you get uniform thickness all throughout the substrate of the material. So, it is very much important that you have several tracks in the coated material in the coating and all in between two tracks there has to be a little bit overlapping, so that you get dense coating with uniform thickness. Now, if you quickly go through the particle effect of particle melting. Uh, before it uh, forms the coating, you will find that 
if it is particle is not uh, molten state then naturally you will find that uh, it is uh, it is uh, spread over the laid over the surface with uh, minimum thickness because uh, just whatever touch the substrate to whichever part of the particle uh, is actually in molten state that touches the substrate and then get uh, overlaid over it but inner part which is not molten that part uh, cannot stay in it flies away on the other hand if it is in molten state then naturally it forms perfect coating as i shown in the as i showed in the earlier uh, slide that thickness is maximum in the middle and it is minimum along radial directions on the other hand if it is over melted then naturally you find that the particle you get lot of splat kind of structure and it's having irregular thickness all throughout the uh, all throughout the direction and you will find that uh, there will also be a lot of roughness which is uh, created because of the coating. Hmm. So, it is very important that you apply appropriate heat so that the material gets melted and subsequently spread over the surface. But again as I mentioned you that there are a large varieties of thermal spray deposition technique like in kinetic spray you get uh, totally you use totally cooled particle to get spread over the surface of the substrate. So, in that case where you use cool particle to get spread over the surface of the substrate there you have to apply very high velocity. So, that it get impeached in and subsequently that uh, you get uh, very high density coating with uh, strong which is strongly adhered to the surface. Now, coming to the main parameters you will find that there are four main parameters which play important role like uh, if you talk about the um, coating parameters naturally which material are you using for coating, what is the melting point of the material, then particle size of the material, then shape and distribution, its flow behavior in which form the material is taking whether it is in the form of powder or it is in the form of wet or it is in the form of broad. Hmm. So, what is the flowability of the particles? what is its thermal mechanical or electrochemical properties of the material which you are using. These all parameters play very important role in determining the quality of the coating. So, this is a coating uh, which you are going to develop for a specific application. So, naturally which kind of material are you going to coat it is uh, to some extent known to you. If you are interested to coat the material for wear resistance application usually you use cermates or maybe composite as a coating material or you can also use hard faced uh, powder as coating. So, naturally you know that uh, which kind of material has to be there for a specific wear resistance application. For example, if it is a high stress wear then you have to use some very hard particle which is tough enough. If it is low stress wear then you can the particle can be hard only ceramic particle will work. If it is uh, for example, uh, corrosion resistance application then you can use some coating which is uh, highly inert or maybe you can also use highly noble in nature on the other hand if it is uh, very much uh, uh, that particular environment is not really uh, so, uh, so uh, aggressive then you can also think of polymeric coating. So, coating material choice is very important and that is the first thing which you should do prior to uh, choosing this particular a particular technique. because which coating material you are going to coat onto the surface of the substrate that dictates the coating technique you should apply. So, all coating techniques as I mentioned here these are not applicable for all kinds of coating. For example, if you are interested to coat ceramic materials you have to opt for the plasma strain technique. If you are interested to coat low melting metallic materials for example, zinc, aluminum then uh, zinc, aluminum or maybe tin coating then you have to opt for you have to opt for that uh, flame strain technique as that uh, technique for coating. If you are interested to develop that uh, very thin like nanostructure coating, so you have to look for the uh, is that either HVOF or maybe kinetic strain as the coating technique. So, which technique should you apply for uh, for coating? It depends completely on the materials which you are choosing for coating hmm. and naturally your precursor for the which, which form the coating has to be it again will vary. If it is only simple flame strain it can be in the form of powder, it can be wet in the it can be in the form of uh, rod. If it is uh, plasma strain then it has to be in the form of powder, 
if it is kinetic strain it has to be in the form of powder. So, your form of coating is also the in which form the coating has to be that depends to some extent on the technique which you are using for coating purpose. And then flow behavior of the coating is very important, it has to be highly flowable, if it is not highly flowable or if it is uh, if it gets agglomerated very quickly then there may be the non-uniform deposition all throughout. Hmm. The feeding properties is also very important how nicely it can be fed and certainly thermal mechanical or electrochemical properties of the coating they basically dictate the thermal mechanical or electrochemical behavior of the coating which you are developing. Then second important parameter is uh, substrate. So, substrate parameter is also very important because what is your substrate is very important depending on the kind of substrate you are using you have to choose the technique. If your substrate is having very low melting temperature then you should not use the very high melting temperature coating material for coating purpose then there will be chance of degradation at the interface or you cannot really apply uh, different coating techniques like plasma straying for coating purpose you have to use uh, flame straying for coating purpose. So, plasma substrate nature is also very important like physical and thermal properties of the substrate and what kind of property tailorment you need on the substrate that also is very important. So, for what is your substrate that is that plays very important role because ultimately you are going to tailor the substrate to a large extent by coating. So, which substrate you are using that basically dictates the which coating techniques you should apply. Then manipulation, manipulation is also very important because that also um, gives you information about the coating strength and also the quality of the coating, the roughness of the coating like stand up distance, speed of the manipulator, pitch or increment, angle of impingement these are the parameters which are very important because these actually again dictates the quality of the coating. Quality of the coating mainly these manipulation parameters particularly it determines uh, the roughness, it determines the strength of the coating, it also determines the microstructure of the coating as well as defect density of the coating. Then finally, the spray heat source and gas which you are using. So, depending on the natural it is nothing but it gives you information about which coating technique you are using, which spraying technique you are using for spraying purpose and as a result of which it gives you kind of direct information about the quality of coating to a large extent. So, these are the process parameters which you need to choose as well as optimize for getting the best property in the coating. Then now if you think of the interface then you will find that uh, usually at the interface if you check carefully by uh, scanning electron microscopy you will find that at the interface there is impeachment of the particles. So, interface is uh, it is important that uh, this particular particles can can or maybe the semi solid or solid or liquid particles should get ideally impinged in the substrate surface. And if it cannot impinge if there is gap or uh, if it is incomplete uh, impingement then naturally you will find that you would not get adequate strength in the interface. So, for getting adequate strength and properties of the coating it is essential that the particles get impinged at the surface of the substrate very nicely to have the proper bond strength because mechanism of bonding is usually the mechanical interlocking. So, it is important that you prepare the substrate prior to the coating very nicely so that you have very nice grooves on the surface of the substrate. So, usually this particular grooving is done by sword blasting operation or sand blasting operation. So, when you do sand blasting depending on the particle size of the sand you will get different kinds of groove formation on the different size of groove formation on the surface of the substrate. So, because of the groove formation this helps in anchoring the uh, solidified melted or maybe semi solid particles to get impeached into the surface of the substrate. So, it is important that surface should be properly treated prior to spraying operation. So, usually the pretreatment technique as I mentioned you they may be of two steps first step is your solvent degreasing 
to clean all the greasy layer or maybe uh, dirty layer which are present onto the surface of the substrate. And second step is sand blasting operation. So, sand blasting is very much helpful and is a kind of mandatory pretreatment step prior to plasma straying operation, uh, prior to any thermal straying operation. So, as this figure mentions that uh, if there are asperities on the surface of the substrate naturally you will find that it get uh, it get impeached in very nicely and get locked to the molten material gets uh, gets locked onto the surface of the substrate. But now it is desirable that asperities are regular in dimension so that that degree of weighting is maximum and you get very nice uh, weightable coating onto the surface of the substrate. Now, if you quickly go through the bond strength uh, so, of this thermosphere deposited layer you will find that bond strength obviously varies with the technique which you are using like in wireframe spraying of the same for example, if you talk about ferrous material coating. So, on by wireframe spraying you get uh, around uh, 14 MPa plus powder feed uh, flame spraying powder flame spraying you get 28 MPa. On the other hand if you use arc spraying you get 41 MPa plasma spraying you get higher than 34 MPa and high velocity oxy fuel getting you get 62 MPa. So, if you compare the coating bond strength of different material you will get some clue you will see that non ferrous materials you get higher bond strength than ferrous material in most of the cases except for uh, few cases actually where you get almost similar bond strength. And uh, again you will find another interesting thing which you find is that you get maximum bond strength uh, when you do high velocity oxyfuel uh, spraying as the proper coating technique. Hmm. So, there uh, actually you, you, will, you will get the maximum density can be maximum bond strength can be as high as 85, 80, 90 MPa. So, um, the reason behind the fact is that uh, when you just go on spraying with a very high velocity you get high degree of mechanical interlocking and as a result of which you get very high coating, very high coating bond strength. It also depends on the kind of material you are coating like ferrous materials you will get a little lower bond strength when you do wire frame spraying, when you do just uh, non ferrous material you get a little higher bond strength. So, bond strength uh, is more or less of same order, but uh, depending on the kind of coating technique you are using you will find that the bond strength also vary or varies a lot. Now, one of the important problem associated with the uh, thermosphere reposition is that there are a lot of defects which are generated in the structure because of the thermal spraying process. Because as I mentioned you during thermal spraying you basically melt the powder uh, or maybe you heat the powder in the state of molten or semi, -molt semi molten state and subsequently spray over the surface of the substrate. Then you will find that uh, after spraying there is a generation of coating. So, if you think see the if you see carefully or maybe think carefully the reason behind the defect generation you will find that the reason behind the defect generation is the oxide particles because this is carried out in open environment. So, a lot of oxide particles are there so which create trouble. There is also another source of uh, defects that is uh, blow that uh, blow holes which is because of the gaseous material which you are using that get uh, stuck that get trapped in the coated layer when it is molten step and naturally when it solidifies then naturally the gas cannot come out. So, it remains in the um, in the form of the um, holes actually remains in entrapped in. So, uh, and also sometimes the unmelted solid particles are also impeached in they are also present in the coating oxide inclusions porosities these are the sources of defects or different types of defects that you observe in the coated product. So, this is again the same sets of defects are shown here like oxide particles are there, oxide inclusions are there, some unpelted particles are there, then uh, layer lines are there, then strat thickness also is important because from the strat thickness you get ideas spread thickness depends on several factors like it depends on amount of heat input, amount the particle size of the melt, it depends on the 
rate at which it is flowing. So, flat, di flat dimension is very important or flat thickness is very important because flat thickness uh, actually gives you information about the coating dimension and depending on the flat thickness the cooling rate also varies because thinner the flat thickness higher will be the cooling rate and finer will be the microstructure. But thicker is the strat thickness you will find that there will be more chance of uh, coding effect or segregation effect and there will be more less uh, rate of uh, heat flow or rate of cooling as a result of which there will be chance of microstructural coarsening. So, plat thickness is very important. So, these are again some of the um, that uh, the defects which are generated in the thermostat deposited layer. And finally, another important defect which is uh, very much associated with thermosphere deposition is the residual stress. So, residual stress is generated because of the fact that uh, usually whenever you are doing spraying, then that uh, sprayed coating or coated material is cooled at a much faster rate. So, that particular uh, faster rate of cooling uh, creates trouble because it introduces lot of uh, residual tensile stress in the coating and not only that uh, you will find that depending on the material which you are using there may be differential quenching rate, there may be differential uh, quenching rate actually and also because of large difference in coefficient of thermal expansion you will find that the maximum stress is introduced at the interface between the coating and that of substrate. So, because uh, this particular uh, stress which is generated or residual stress which is introduced by thermal spraying is uh, proportional to that of Young's modulus of the coating material is proportional to that of uh, that uh, thermal expansion coefficient differences and also it is proportional to that of the dt dt that is uh, thermal gradient. So, higher is the Young's modulus, higher is the coefficient of thermal expansion differences, higher will be the stress arrested within the component. So, usually you will find that after the coating is over if the coating thickness is very high then there may be the coating with uh, uh, coating actually which falls out and it is important that uh, you, you should you should optimize the thickness. So, that there is no chance of spalling out of the coating because of the residual stress arrested during coating process. So, uh, this is about the thermosphere deposition. So, in summary I can say that uh, thermosphere deposition is very important technique for the deposition of wide range of materials and uh, but you have to be careful in choosing the proper deposition technique and also you have to be careful to choose proper process parameters. So, that you get rid of the residual stress uh, which is arrested in the coated material after thermal spraying. And sometimes uh, for uh, residual stress relieving you or you can also go on stress relieving operation where you heat treat the spread part at a little higher temperature. So, that stress whatever stress is introduced is released and you have to be also careful to reduce the different kinds of defects which are introduced after the thermal spray deposition process particularly the defects like uh, porosities then blow holes and also the intrusions particles. If it is reactive material you can also go on doing this thermal spray deposition in a closed chamber where you get rid of all atmospheric con contaminants and uh, process parameter selection is very important and also depending on the material you choose the proper technique. So, that you get proper adherence at the interface with the proper surface finish and good quality coating on the substrate of your choice for the desired application. Thank you very much.